Hi there, everybody. Figure I'd go ahead and continue my spotlight series and talk about a member of my cleanup crew. This is a very attractive snail, a gastropod in my 50-gallon uh, cube reef aquarium that uh, typically is mistaken often for an Asarius snail. You can tell by the trunk or the proboscis there sticking up under its shell looking like a snorkel. Normally that's all you'll see from this particular snail when it's buried as it spends most of its time under the gravel. It's an attractive looking snail. Uh, it was sold to me as a butterscotch Nisarius, but again it's not a Nisarius snail, it's actually a Babylonia snail, which is a whelk type of gastropod, but again not a true whelk, so figure that out as you will. Um, other names for this particular snail are leopard or tiger, nesarius, or an ivory whelk. Nonetheless, um, I enjoy having this in my aquarium. Uh, I believe it to do a good job uh, keeping the gravel clean. Uh, it does spend a majority of its time under the sand, but you can always or oftentimes tell where it is by seeing that little snorkel sticking up, maybe a few millimeters uh, or a centimeter above the gravel. Uh, it can move along at a fairly good clip for uh, as far as a snail and how quickly snails can move. Um, occasionally it will make a pilgrimage up the glass to the top of the aquarium, hang out at the water line for a little bit. Uh, I'll see it scrambling across the rocks sometimes. Looks like it's scavenging for food or film or detritus that uh, accumulates in the aquarium. So fish aquarium is uh, about uh, just shy of uh, a year old, so it's uh, fairly established. You know, here it is uh, scaling the glass, uh, heading up to the, the surface of the tank. Uh, most of the fish leave it alone. However, I do have a blenny, a Kamahara blenny, that uh, seems to be a little bit more than curious. So you'll see a little clip coming up where the blenny uh, kind of hits it pretty hard and uh, flips it over. Um, but you'll see as well later in the video, this uh, snail can actually right itself, which is definitely uh, beneficial, particularly in a tank also occupied by fish. Um, here it is at the surface, and uh, not quite sure why it uh, likes to come up here to the top of the tank. Seems like it uh, almost looks like it's doing uh, shell lifting exercises for a little workout. But uh, I figure it's probably eating some of the film that collects at the water line. And uh, it seems like occasionally when it gets up to the top here, it'll hang out for a little while and then it will drop or fall or plunge uh, back to the bottom of the tank. It does look like it's trying to lift the shell or take turns emptying the shell of water and filling it up again. I'm not sure what's going on there. But it's an attractive snail. The patterns on the shell are definitely appealing. So I'd say one of the more attractive species of snails that you can get for your aquarium. Uh, they say it's relatively safe, although some claim that it will attack other smaller snails, smaller nesaria snails, or even uh, clams. So uh, I guess you always want to be on, uh, be wary of that. Always pays to do your research ahead of time, and of course, no one person's experiences are going to speak for the, uh, the majority. Here, the blenny hits this guy pretty hard. We play that back in slow motion. This is one eighth speed and that blenny just pommels this snail here flips it over unfortunately takes the snail a little while to recover as you've got the blenny is kind of hovering nearby i'm hoping this doesn't become a routine here I certainly wouldn't want uh, the snail to get uh, preyed upon or killed or eaten by its fish tank mates there's a blenny again. It's kind of hovering nearby. So the snail takes its time in re-emerging from its shell. As I mentioned, they can right themselves, which is helpful. You don't want them to remain vulnerable upside down, exposed. 
down. That was pretty uh, pretty quick here. So it did did recover. It, uh, it might head over towards the rocks, but uh, I think it's still uh, probably a little bit uh, in shock here after that uh, solid hit. Little zinnia forest there nearby. I try to keep my zinnia isolated to this side of the tank. I've got some that have separated. Um, here's a little, uh, or one of the two uh, Watchman gobies. Unfortunately, this guy's got a split dorsal fin. Probably had a little skirmish recently. Uh, that's since grown back. He's right in the mound of sand at the entrance to the burrow of one of the snapping shrimp. And here you'll see um, the uh, Babylonia snail drop from the top of the tank. Any moment now, it's going to go ahead and uh, fall through the water. There we go. All right, you'll see again how it uh, will be able to go ahead and uh, extend itself and right itself back up again. Now, it's not often that this snail, we call it butterscotch, will remain visible in the tank. Once in a while, I'll get to uh, see and enjoy it. Um, but oftentimes, it will remain buried. Um, you'll see it's going to go ahead and burrow back into the sand here after it wanders around a little bit. But, uh, fortunately, again, uh, most of the fish seem to leave it alone, let it do its own thing. He's going to just fade into the background. Okay, looks like uh, one of the watchmen just chased the other one around. The Xenia push. And it uh, looks like it's going to go ahead and uh, burrow back into the sand. takes a little while, so I'll probably go ahead and play it back, uh, speeding it up a little bit. You can see the process at a uh, more accelerated pace. Now that sensory organ, or the proboscis, that uh, snorkel or trunk that uh, remains uh, oftentimes sticking up through the sand, is a great sense of smell. And uh, as you might have seen in other videos, uh, when food enters the water column, oftentimes the Nasarius just burst out of the sand. They emerge to pursue whatever the source of that smell was, a piece of fish or some thought out frozen food that have been added to the aquarium, maybe some pellets or other items like that. So here it goes, heading back under that uh, blanket of sand. Obviously, it's a time-consuming process. Now, this uh, mound of sand here was created shortly after a grass was added. The grass immediately buried itself right in the sand, right by this mound. And of course, this uh, Nasarius or this, uh, I'm sorry, Babylonia snail was there as well. Didn't know if they're going to get disoriented when uh, additional sand was uncovered as a result of the excavations of the pistol or snapping shrimp. And it looks like it's just about hidden from view. Our dreaded Blenny again. Hopefully, he'll leave the Babylonia alone.
And here is eight times normal speed. You can see how it looks when the Babylonia snail burrows or buries itself into the sandy substrate. Eight times normal speed. And once again, here is a little segment showing the snail uprighting itself. They've got a fair amount of flexibility with their soft bodies and foot. They can extend out, flip themselves back over, sometimes more graceful than others, and get back on their way. But overall, a nice uh, a member of the cleanup crew, an attractive looking snail added to the reef tank. And I enjoy having this uh, here in my tank. Thanks for watching. Hope this uh, little spotlight video was helpful and interesting to you. I look forward to uh, putting some more videos out here in the near future.